Carol here. Welcome to the Tuesday point and shoot update for December the 4th, 2018. This past week has been a week of struggles to try and gain some stability back in this tank. And I think to some degree I'm heading in the right direction and I'm confident that even though I'm going to be gone for two weeks, yes, I'm leaving in five short days, which by short days, any reef keeper knows what I mean, all the stuff that there is to do before I go, but I'm pretty confident that things will be fine while I'm gone and I expect I'll have more work to do when I get back. So let's start by looking at the corals. The bullseye rhodactus is migrating downwards. Don't know what that's about, but I guess I'll find out where he ends up. These recordias are something I don't show very often, and they are part of a large colony that I had at one time, and these are the survivors. They were getting beat up by the torch I used to have here, but they're finally starting to come back. There's one of the shrimp. The pectinia color is changing again, and I really think it's sensitive to the level of nitrate. Nitrate has come down a little bit, but it's still not where I would like to have it. Check out the chalice garden. I have moved several things around in here, and one thing I did do was put the devil's eye chalice here with the other chalices. So hopefully it'll have enough light. I think it's a roughly the same light level as it had in the other spot. Back here in the corner, I moved some sand back and the clownfish immediately started going at it again. So I think they still want to dig. There is a conch snail buried right there. Well, he was buried, but <laughs> I see they've dug him up. So I don't know whether they still want to get to the glass or what's going on. You can see they've done some damage to my red tree gorgonian right here. I have to remove that branch. Coming around the corner, the Montipora. The SPS in here seem to be the ones that are struggling because of the issues I'm having. LPS and others look pretty good. So although they seem to be doing okay, they really aren't thriving like they were before I started having all this trouble. There's my miniature turban area. Red frog spawn. The bubble coral loves this spot. It's a little closed up right now because of the time of day. Uh oh, <laughs> unintentional tree trimming when I was messing around with the barnacle. There's the rhodactus looking beautiful. So I did do some reorganizing here, as you can see. I swapped the places essentially of the red brain coral and the clam, Buster and Stanley, and the barnacle is no longer in here. I removed it. It was really tough getting Elvis out, but eventually he did come out on his own. He's still a little unsure because he doesn't really always dive into it like he used to the other one, but he is going in and out and into all three. So perhaps he'll adopt one of them as his home and things will all be good again. The Blastomussa, I still have to mount that on another rock. I've not got around to that yet. And everything over here is, is doing pretty well. You can see I still have not cleaned those back to the power heads. I have two brand new ones that I am going to take and put in in place of those. One of those two rattles, I don't know which one it is, so I'm just going to replace them with new ones. And then I always take any of the ones that make noises and they go downstairs into my saltwater tote. So I have lots of circulation in there. You can see that I have put the grafted Monty right in that spot. And the reason I can put it there is that the little tiny green Yuma baby disappeared. I did see it one day in the junkyard down here. However, the next day when I went to look for it, thinking I might try and get it out, it was gone. Oh, there's Elvis. Hey, Elvis. The other thing I did was move the fox coral up here. You can see it's got a little bit of damage at the back, and that's because in the corner there, it was constantly getting flipped over. I don't know who was doing it, the snails, the tiger pistol shrimp digging underneath, I have no idea. So I'm hoping that it will do okay there, because there's a little more light, which I'm not sure is good for it, and uh, I'll just have to watch it carefully. These guys are really varied. None of them look super good. The colors are pretty faded out. 
like check that out that's like pretty much just brown and I mounted the Fox Flame Acro there it's pretty much lost all of its color that one was lovely a couple weeks ago if you remember it was blue and green with red polyps yeah now it's just brown so there's stuff going on in here that I'm pretty sure is nitrate related because that's the only parameter I can think of that has become a problem that chalice is doing well and one thing I was never able to really show you when the corky sea finger was in here is my jackal lantern leptoceros it's really spreading nicely on the rocks getting some awesome wrinkles and it'll be really interesting to see what happens when it meets up with the leptastria there so we'll see they're both relatively slow growing and it could be a while before that actually happens now when it comes to parameters we have nitrates this week of somewhere under 20. I can't really say because I have a choice between 10 and 25 and I couldn't really tell. So I called it 17. What I've done to try and address the nitrate issue is multiple water changes. I could take 30 gallons out of the display and replace it with new water because I do have the ability to have that much water. However, the last thing I want to do is shock the system. So I elected to do many smaller water changes. I also added that gray pad. And here it is right here. Acurel nitrate reducing pad That's what it says. Uh, reviews I read were good. People felt it did a good job reducing nitrates. However, I'm starting to think that the reason it does that is that it provides an extensive surface for the growth of bacteria, not because it has anything in particular embedded in it that absorbs nitrate from the water. So like anything else, you have to build up your population of bacteria and allow them to do their job. I mentioned last week about Nopox. I have been using Nopox at four milliliters a day and maybe that combined with a nitrate reducing pad which provides a surface for it for it to grow bacteria might be part of what's going on here so between water changes nitrate reducing pad and no pox the nitrates are coming down slowly and slowly is fine with me phosphate has crept up very slightly from 0.17 last week to 0.18 this week magnesium has gone up again to 1470. So once again, I've reduced the dosage that I'm putting in of magnesium. Calcium is down to 480, and that's fine. It's on a slow downward trend. Over the next two weeks, it should still stay above 400 while I'm away and not cause any problems. At least that's what I'm hoping. Alkalinity is at 8.6. So overall, it's kind of a good news update in the sense that nothing horrible has happened. <laughs> I've done the rearranging I wanted to do, especially with that huge, ugly, brown patch of zoanthids out of here. Uh, that was my bad. I chose an invasive, not particularly attractive type of zoanthid, or I guess it was a palithoa, and it just took over. I did rescue two small plugs of two different types of zoanthids that I'm going to be putting in Mollywood. And speaking of Mollywood, there she is. Look, Ma, no frag rack. <laughs> Everything I had to put in here is now placed on the rocks. The only things that aren't glued down are the two war corals. They came from the other tank, and I'm not 100% sure yet where I'm going to put them. I'm thinking on the sand somewhere. The other thing I put in here is the green Yuma. The sand wasn't cutting it, so I put a rock in there with it, and I moved it in here this afternoon, and it's adjusting. Not looking particularly happy, but I'm sure it'll be fine. That one I would like to put down here. I think that would look, be a great place for it. It would look really nice there. There's the weeping willow toadstool. We think it's a weeping willow. We don't know for sure. I guess we'll find out. And I believe it's on the verge of opening some polyps. So we'll see what happens with that. And finally, look at George. 
getting lobes again. Tomorrow's task is going to be to sort out this horror show of wires over here. They're just completely unmanaged at the moment. And before I leave, I want to make sure everything is properly organized and every switch is going to be labeled. Things, I think, look so much better in this tank now that the clutter is reduced. The fish are all doing great. No problems with any of them. Magnus the Clown Goby has been spending a lot of time in this green bird's nest over here. I don't know if it's because he's maybe getting a little weak because he's old. He's about six years old. That's how long I've had him. He could be older than that. And maybe the bird's nest holds him more securely than his Montipora. Or maybe something tried to get him in the Montipora and so he's abandoned that because it's not safe anymore. And there's Armando. I couldn't find him one day and this is where he was. He still swims around, he still eats, everything's good. It's just that this is where he lives now. I mounted the new torch there and that was just today, so it's not fully out yet, but it was doing really well. I like walking in and just seeing all the color and seeing the fish swimming around. The reason they're all out right now is that it's feeding time. As soon as I finish this recording, I will be giving them their nightly frozen food. That is the one thing I have not changed. I only feed these fish twice a day. In the morning they get one pinch of flakes, and at night they get probably half a cube of frozen food. So I don't believe I'm overfeeding them. I just think that there are issues. Oh yeah, and how could I forget the snail? I found a turbo snail in the junkyard over here and it was upside down and it looked like his operculum was closed, but I could not tell if it was dead or not. So I had to remove it from the tank and sniff it because we all know the smell test is how you know whether they're alive or not. <laughs> And yeah, it was dead. <laughs> so I put it on my front porch out in the cold because I really want to keep the shell, but I have no clue how to get it out of the shell without stinking up my whole house. Next week, it's quite possible I might be able to publish an update if I can coordinate with my daughter, who is looking after the tank, to get some footage via my Wise Wi-Fi camera. So we'll see if I can do that. If I can, maybe we'll go on a tour and see what's what and what's happening while I'm away. So thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And let me know if you have any questions. I always look forward to your comments. And Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, whatever you celebrate. I hope you and your family have a wonderful season. And we will see you in January, unless I can organize something next week. Oh,